International Conference on Electrical Engineering, Computing Science and Automatic Control. Uh, this time we are going to present uh, both ways, online and um, a presential too. So uh, for this uh, first topic, we, are, we have here to Ramakrishna uh, with the topic of low complexity and high performance expert detection technique for MIMO communication system. So if uh, you are here, Ramakrishna? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. I'm well, ready. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for your attendance to this conference and with this uh, relevant topic. So uh, it's your time. I don't know if you need uh, something else. And we have 15 minutes to start with the um, your presentation and then five minutes uh, of some questions. OK? Oh, OK. OK. Perfect. Can I share the content? Yeah, you can share right now. Is it visible, sir? Yes. Yes, we can see it. Go ahead, please. Yeah, OK. Uh, yeah, today's uh, session chair, Sir Dr. Gaspar Gonzalez, uh, and uh, other participants who are uh, ready to present their uh, research work. Good morning to you all. And I am Dr. V. Ramakrishna, working as a student professor in the Department of ECE School of Engineering and Technology, Padmavati Mahila Vishwavidyalam Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh, India. And uh, my research topic is low complexity and high performance peer detection technique for MIMO communication system. And uh, um, my co author is uh, Professor Tipati Anil Kumar. Coming to the contents, uh, contents which I'm going to uh, uh, explain in the coming uh, next 10 15 minutes. First, I'll start with the abstract and uh, introduction to MIMO system model, uh, which is one of the popular model in commu wireless communication system. Method, already existing method will be discussed, then the proposed method will be discussed. Already existing method is the general Euclidean norm method, which is peer detection algorithm based on uh, L square now. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Next, uh, the proposed one is based on the spear detection algorithm based on L infinite norm. The results and discussion. Uh, then uh, the results and discussion will be discussed in terms of performance analysis and complexity analysis. Then conclusions references. Coming to the abstract. Uh, in the literature, many authors reported about this multiple input, multiple output detection methods. Uh, which is mainly uh, uh, multiple antennas will be used at the transmitting and multiple uh, uh, antennas at the receiving end so that uh, uh, high performance and uh, the you can get the high speed data uh, and in that also a lot of uh, detection methods are there uh, and uh, efficiency OK, I think that uh, we have some some trouble and uh, some troubles here with uh, Ramakrishnan. Uh, please give us two minutes, two more minutes just to know if he's uh, available. Sorry to again. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, previously, uh, many authors reported about. Yes, sir. is it OK, sir? Yeah, shall I continue? Yeah, please, you can continue. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. MIMO detection methods uh, and that uh, the efficient detection technique is the spear detection method, apart from K based uh, technique is also there. And uh, here we mainly focused on the spear detection method, which is one of the efficient detection technique in MIMO detection methods. 
And uh, initially, in general, uh, the basic uh, algorithm is the Euclidean norm, which is used for traversing a tree in speed detection. Here, uh, by using our proposed method, the complexity can be reduced with the uh, negligible performance loss. The performance will be good, but the complexity is reduced. This is mainly we have achieved because uh, the number of nodes visited and the critical path of the search tree. And here, this work mainly presents the forecast for MIMO with 16 QA modulation. We have uh, uh, analyzed the performance of uh, two existing algorithms and compared with the uh, you know, proposed method. The performance is uh, compared with the maximum likelihood detection, which is one of the best algorithm, but the complexity is uh, very high. That's, and one more method is L square now. And we have uh, compared with, uh, with the help of uh, this MATLAB tool we have used. Is my voice is audible, sir? Is it okay? Yeah. Next, uh, is, uh, the complexity is so complexity complexity is also uh, compared uh, in terms of real multiplications and uh, real additions and also the floating point operations. Uh, when we compared in terms of uh, this multiplication real additions, complexity is uh, very less when we compare with the traditional algorithm and the best algorithm. Here, the proposed detection shows the better performance as the number of transmitting antennas increased. Even though the number of transmitting antennas increased, still we able to get the better performance. But in the case of other algorithm like maximum likelihood detection, where if the number of transmitting antennas increased, the uh, performance, uh, the complexity will be very high. So it will be very difficult uh, to design that, that particular system. Coming to the introduction, the MIMO multiple input, multiple output technique for improving spectrum efficiency or diversity. Traditional algorithms are there, like zero forcing, minimum mean square, MMSC, simply SIC, and other uh, algorithms, MIMO detection algorithms, where the computational complexity is low, but the performance is modest. Uh, the zero of MMSC, SIC are the low complexity algorithms, where are the high complexity algorithms are also there, DFS, BFS, and KBEST. And uh, this low computing complexity algorithms, when we consider all these things, these uh, are uh, poor in terms of better rate. And uh, in MIMO detection, the major problem is to achieve optimum performance with less computational complexity. Uh, we are having a maximum likelihood detection, which gives the good performance, optimal performance, but the complexity is high. But here, what we are doing is we are getting the best performance with the reducing the complexity. That is our main aim. Even though if we have increased the transmitting antennas, then still we will able to get the good performance with a less complexity. So coming to this uh, spear detection, which we have uh, used in our research work, this is mainly based on again the maximum likelihood the uh, traditional uh, algorithm uh, and uh, this ml detection strategy the computational difficulty is uh, of excessive search grows exponentially whereas spear detection of use that grows polynomially that is the difference between that uh, maximum likelihood and the spear detection method and uh, here in the following sections which uh, we will discuss about the mimo system model and the mathematical expressions which we have used in the research work and the findings in terms of beta rate. And finally, we'll discuss the conclusion. The basic idea. Yeah, here spirit detection where we'll try to restrict the search area. Uh, uh, like uh, searching the whole uh, constellation points, what we'll do is we'll try to restrict the, the particular sphere and what are the points which are there in that particular sphere, we will uh, only consider those constellation points. With that, the search uh, area will be reduced 
the complexity will also be reduced. Calculation time, computational complexity law will also decrease. And that will be minimized. Advantage of this method, which we have used peer detection, uh, when we compare with the traditional maximum likely detection, it's uh, uh, generally maximum likelihood algorithm, such as the whole consideration. That is uh, what the difference between that. The key issues which affect the peer detection: how to select the search radius. If it is too large. Too many points you will consider again the complexity will increase. If it is set, the uh, search radius is set too small, then the point may within grid are not included. That is also uh, other, uh, that leads to other problems. So set the radius so that we will get the good uh, solution and with the less complexity. How to set that and all those things we'll discuss in the next part. Here, this is the MIMO system model, basic model, uh, the source destination, and between that uh, constellation mapper channel, MIMO detector. Here we'll use uh, the various methods, demodulation and demapper, which uh, here after modulation mapping, that will be uh, what are the uh, QAM, BPSK, uh, QAM modulations will be uh, uh, map and uh, at the end uh, receiver and those will be uh, again uh, recovered using the dmapper you have five more minutes no. oh okay yeah this is the signal model which we have used uh, uh, r equal to hs plus n general model and uh, yeah, spear detection algorithm based on n square norm. Uh, this is the Euclidean norm, where it's just nothing but simply we can define as a square root of sum of squares uh, of uh, the particular coordinates which we are taking. And here we are trying to restrict the radius. Uh, this is the expression for that. And uh, these are the equations uh, which we have uh, used on this. Uh, first, we have uh, done this QRD composition method and um, then Euclidean norm to calculate. And then after that, uh, start we have started the iteration for k equal to m uh, k equal to m minus one, and so on. And coming to this, uh, we have set this uh, spear detection algorithm based on infinite norm. We have calculated one uh, metric that is uh, T S double bar T of S infinite uh, by using these expressions. And uh, here uh, we have uh, modified the critical constraint, uh, the search uh, radius, and uh, these are the results which uh, coming to the results which we have obtained in terms of performance analysis. Uh, this is done in the MATLAB tool, uh, the 2021 version. And uh, here we have used a forecast for MIMO system, and uh, we have transmitted the symbol 16 QA modulation. And if you see the comparison, the performance will be same as that uh, the maximum likelihood, which we can say it as the best, but the complexity when it comes to these are the uh, charts which shows the better rate performance and simulation time also. And the, coming to the complexity analysis, we have done in terms of real multiplications, real additions, and floating point operations. If you see this norm, uh, infinite norm ST is uh, the complexity or the number of multiplications additions are very less when you compare with the maximum likelihood and two norm ST. When these multiplications additions are reduced, that means the multipliers add, uh, adders which are used in the hardware, the complexity is reduced. This is what we have achieved. Uh, and coming to the conclusion, uh, the low complexity is achieved with the proposed uh, method. And uh, here uh, we have avoided the squaring operations and we have reduced the algorithmic complexity in search tree because we have restricted within the sphere. But uh, uh, this can be uh, useful in terms of silicon complexity, low power area, low power and area. And these are the references. Which we have uh, referred for our work. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Any queries, sir? Thank you, you, Ramakrishna. Uh, 
Well, uh, right now we are going to have five minutes. Uh, if anyone has any question, uh, okay, in the online way or uh, here in the auditorium, uh, please let us know. Okay. In this microphone. Okay. Yes, I, I have a question, Gaspar. Thank you. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, ma'am. We can hear you. Thank you. Basic comparison with the maximum likelihood detection because it was too fast. I, I couldn't. I was able, I was, uh, able to, to see the comparison in terms of the detector rate or something like that. Can hear the question. Will you hear it, uh, Ramakrishna? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. If you can explain again the comparison with the maximum likelihood. Please uh, come again. Uh, question. Please come again. Question. If you can uh, show again the comparison with the maximum likelihood detector, please. Yeah, this one. This is the question, Ramakrishna. Sir, yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Yes, we can hear you, Rama Krishnan. Could you please uh, just uh, maybe explain us a little bit? Uh, yeah, results. Shall I explain this? Shall I, sir? Yeah, it would be helpful, please. Yeah, okay. Here, uh, this uh, infinite norm ST, which is the proposed one, is uh, compared with the two norm ST and ML, maximum likelihood detection. And this is done for four cross four my mode six by using this modulation 16 QAM quadrature amplitude modulation. Where if you see this SNR versus BR, and also uh, this uh, second uh, the figure three is the comparison of simulation time of different. What we are achieved is we are getting the performance same as the existing algorithms. But when it comes to the uh, complexity, we are getting the less complexity with the other algorithms. That is what we are. If you see the comparison of simulation time also, we have compared in figure three, the maximum likelihood uh, algorithm is taking more time. It's around 35 microseconds. Whereas for the same uh, 10 or 15 SN or DB, the uh, if you see the infinite norm SG is taking very less and two uh, norm SG is also taking less whereas uh, a maximum likelihood algorithm simulation time is very high and coming to this uh, uh, bitter rate and uh, of different algorithms and here one two more uh, graphs are there figure four and figure five which is uh, a comparison of better rate algorithms with initial radius. We have tried to restrict the radius within the sphere so that the constellation points will be considered within the sphere only. So the complexity will be reduced and it covers all the uh, points which we have to take. That is what we have uh, 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 took as uh, this uh, uh, in the research work. And here also the simulation time uh, again, again, if you see the maximum likelihood the simulation time is high when uh, with the initial radius we have uh, considered uh, the other way and this uh, with the initial radius by restricting the uh, search radius. And this is the complexity comparison. 
of uh, the other uh, the same uh, algorithms in all the uh, this performance or the complexity units we have taken the uh, maximum likelihood and the true norm is me and we are compared with our proposed uh, method that is the infinite norm sg hey ramakrishna uh, yes. well thank you so much for your answer uh, mm -hmm. Well, we are right now on time, uh, so yeah. uh, if anybody has some other question, maybe uh, we could have your uh, email or something uh, and well to share these questions and in other way uh, answer. Right. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yes, thank you. Have, have a good day. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Well, uh, now we have here to Marco Alberto Mendoza. Uh, Marco Alberto Mendoza, thank you so Mario much. Alberto, for... Mario Alberto Mendoza. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. No problem. No problem. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have here to Mario Alberto Mendoza. I wonder if you have already your a screen and you can share your presentation please yes thank you yes we have 15 minutes mario alberto yes thank you and then uh, we are going can to have can five you minutes for questions and yes. we have here to Mario Alberto with the topic uh, that is space weather observations and HF transmissions around the 2021 autumn, autumn equinox. Yes, thank you. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes, we can see. It. OK, thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. And uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to show our uh, article named uh, Space Weather Observation and HF, uh, HF Transmission Around the 2021 Autumn Equinox. Uh, for this uh, paper, the authors are uh, Giselle Galvan uh, from Simvestap, Mexico, uh, Miguel Reis, uh, from the Univers uh, Universidad Complutense de Madrid, uh, Mario Alberto Mendoza Bárcenas uh, from the uh, Aerospace Development Center of uh, Instituto Politécnico Nacional, Mexico, and uh, Cian Aguirre uh, from the Mexican Federation of Radio Experimenters. In this, uh, for this uh, presentation, uh, my name is Mario Alberto Mendoza Bárcenas. Thank you. Well, uh, from uh, for this uh, presentation, uh, the uh, proposed agenda is uh, based in five points. The introduction, uh, solar phenomena affecting space weather, a uh, second point. And number three, experimental settings for this uh, experience. And uh, in, in, in the uh, point number four, the data analysis and final, the conclusions. Well, uh, in, in this point, uh, with uh, the first point, uh, an introduction. Well, uh, according to NOAA, the space weather describe the variation in the space environment between the sun and earth. In particular, space weather describe the phenomena that impact system and technologies in orbit, for example, uh, spacecraft, scientific instruments, among others, and uh, on Earth, according to the reference number uh, one. In this uh, picture, can you see uh, main variation in the space environment delivered to the solar activity, uh, mainly solar flares, coronal holes, some spots, radio emissions, uh, solar irradiance, coronal mass ejection, and the interaction with the, with the space environment that affect to the Earth, for example, uh, in the forms of uh, geomagnetic storms and other phenomena. 
Considering the planning requirements and the tendency of the seasonal distribution of geomagnetic storms to reach a higher value, values, sorry, according the uh, reference five to seven uh, described below the, the slide, this experiment was planned around the 2021 autumn equinox in the north in the northern hemisphere. It started in August 23 and ended in number five, number seven, sorry. The campaign counted with the participation of uh, more than 100 amateur radio stations in Mexico. The tracking of space weather variation and their effects on Earth was done by the uh, daily consideration of uh, uh, 14 different phenomena and parameters. Seven of them describe the solar activity uh, like uh, sunspot and active range of numbers, solar flares characteristic, coronal mass ejection, CMA, and uh, radio emission occurrence, presence of coronal holes, and the value of uh, F10.7 uh, centimeters radio emission. In these uh, pictures, uh, we uh, we can see the uh, some uh, uh, ideas like the typical radio ham station used for this experiment and the uh, and the picture about the example of uh, active regions uh, in the sun for the November 9 uh, for this year, according the spaceweather.com uh, point com sorry and the okay the presence of solar uh, flares alert about the sudden increases of electromagnetic radiation can cut rise the electronic density of the atmospheric region and its capacity to absorb signals at the hf band of the radio spectrum meanwhile the presence of cmas and coronal holes open the possibility of geomagnetic storms uh, whose probability can be evaluated considering the characteristics of the present solar wind and in the case of cma uh, the size and position of the involved active region cmes uh, carry enormous amount of high energy and particles than uh, and uh, are the main responsible for geomagnetic storm that can damage spacecraft and satellites and waken short radio communication wave. Uh, you can see uh, in these pictures uh, example of uh, this uh, solar fly, solar flare, sorry, and uh, uh, in the other hand, the example of CME corresponding at uh, January 19 of uh, uh, 20 uh, uh, at. Uh, uh, three, uh, sorry, uh, 15, uh, 20 hours. Yes. Well, uh, okay. Uh, about this uh, solar phenomena affecting the space weather, uh, for this, uh, for this campaign, for these experiments, uh, we have uh, a, a first selection of uh, some uh, days in this uh, period that uh, cover the August uh, 44, uh, 2024 to November 9. In this period, uh, we can see the occurrence of uh, these, uh, these uh, variations in the space weather as uh, strongest, solar, strongest uh, solar flares, occurrence of CMEs, uh, radio emissions, and uh, coronal holes. In the table number two, uh, you can see the days with geomagnetic perturbation of heart. This is an uh, important uh, data because it is uh, one of the uh, main points uh, for these experiments, uh, mainly uh, uh, with the evaluation of the values of the uh, KP index and the DST index uh, 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 in the on, on her, uh, is uh, well remem remembering the occurrence during the survey 
of two uh, J1 storms in uh, September um, 17 and October uh, 30, 31. One G2 on October um, uh, 30, uh, 12 and uh, two J3 in November uh, 3 and 4. As can you note, uh, solar activity and consequently space weather with four difference from those registered during the uh, during the preliminary stood main in uh, 2020. Well, coronal holes are the coronal regions that appear dark in extreme violet of X-ray emergence. During the experiments occur uh, eight M-class and one X-class solar flares and 17 CMEs. In addition, coronal holes were present in uh, 50 of the um, 70, uh, 75, uh, 77 uh, days. Uh, these observations are the basis for the selection of solar activity shown in the table number one. In this uh, indices, uh, DST and uh, KP inform about the present, present geomagnetic condition on Earth. The first is uh, measured in nanoteslas units and evaluates the intensity of the globally symmetrical equatorial electrojet. It takes uh, uh, values, ne uh, negative values, and uh, when an intense geomagnetic storms take place, DST varies between 100 and uh, 249 uh, nanoteslas. A DST value lower than uh, minus uh, uh, 13, 30, sorry, 30 uh, nanoteslas, usually considered as the beginning of the perturbed uh, magnetic uh, situations. Well, in order to uh, consider the autumn equinox and the northern hemisphere, this experiment was conducted from August. Uh, 25 to November, uh, to November uh, 17, uh, uh, 20, uh, 21. We recorded the information provided by Radio Ham operations of the National Emerging Network of the Mexican Federation of, of, of Radio Experimenters. The Radio National, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, sorry, and the uh, Radio uh, National Experiment uh, Network, uh, emergency, emergency Network, sorry, testing prices, practices over Mexico during approximately uh, 30 minutes uh, every night of the years. A radio ham station is selected each day from a pool of qualified stations operate as control station, whereas the other radio uh, than station of parts at nodes of the control station. The transmission were carried out at uh, two HE frequency, uh, seven point uh, 120 megahertz, uh, uh, 14 meters band, and uh, three points, uh, 720 megahertz, uh, 18 meters band, using analog single uh, side band. Well, you have four minutes. Thank you. Uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, pictures, uh, we can see uh, some of the uh, Radio Ham uh, station partici uh, par uh, that uh, participate in these experiments, uh, taking as a control station uh, 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 a station uh, uh, in Colima. Uh, in the bands of uh, 40 and uh, 18 meters. Well, what is the criteria for uh, these experiments? Well, the signals transmitted to the control uh, station are registered for two numbers. The error is a level. This, uh, this uh, error is level uh, shown, uh, shown uh, in, the, in the table number three. Uh, uh, correspond at the uh, qualification of the uh, strength in the in the in the signal uh, when the error is uh, equal to uh, five nine correspond a perfectly readable and extremely strong, strong signal meanwhile error is uh, equal 
quality, for example, tree tree, implies a readable with considerable difficult weak sign. Uh, uh, with the uh, data, uh, can you see uh, some uh, uh, pictures with the graphicals with the uh, some. Um, uh, 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 interaction with the with the uh, uh, control station with the uh, other uh, radio ham stations in the uh, 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 40 and 18 uh, in 80 sorry meters advanced we can see okay uh, finally uh, with the conclusions the results about the experiment are based on observation provided by Radio Ham Operation, affiliate of uh, radio, uh, National Emergency Networks, who conduct an experiment around 2021 autumn equinox in the Northern Sphere. Propagation condition give by an open website were also analyzed with uh, which demonstrates difference between HF bands and provide insights of the behavior uh, given by several radio ham uh, stations during the during the experiment uh, period. The scarce number of uh, available observations, especially in 14 meters uh, transmission prevent us from drawing well-founded relationship between uh, detected space weather phenomena and observed radio anomaly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mario Alberto Mendoza uh, for sharing you, your topic with us. And now we have uh, five minutes of questions. If anybody here online or uh, if they are in the auditorium, please, um, you are free to, to ask any anything. Yes, I have a question. Hello? Hello? Yes. Oh, yes. Jorge? Yes. I, oh. I just uh, want to know how these um, studies can be conducted um in order to obtain um uh, outage probability of uh, hf links uh, how these studies so how, how these results can be applied to communications and in the area of, of high frequency links yes uh, thank you for the for your question yes uh, uh, i will well this you know, understand your questions well, about the, uh, the results uh, for this uh, campaign, uh, show uh, the first uh, elements for the uh, space weather and the, uh, for future relationship, relationships sorry, between the uh, variation in the space weather and the uh, mm, uh, communications in the in sphere. Uh, this is a mysterious um, uh, topic uh, between the, for example, uh, radio hands, uh, and the, our group we try to uh, discover some uh, with the. A point of view of scientific, what is the uh, the, 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 effect, the the affectations? What what is the uh, imp impacts in this uh, ionospheric uh, propagation channel? No? Uh, the with the future uh, campaigns, we can uh, help uh, uh, discover new uh, relationships for this. Uh, uh, for this topic. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge, for your 
question. Anybody uh, else who has some questions? Okay, I think everything's okay uh, right now, Dr. Mario Alberto Mendoza. Thank you so much for your presentation. And uh, well, you already share us your email. If anybody wants to um, contact you, uh, please uh, thank you. feel free to contact him. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Mario Alberto. We are going to continue with the next topic. Um, that is the implementation of eight channel pools with modulation with X14 light interface. Uh, this topic is introduced by Luis Adolfo Luna Rodriguez. And thank you so much for your uh, for having you here, um, Luis Adolfo. Uh, you can share right now your your slides. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Yes, we can. So we we have 15 minutes and then we are going to have uh, five minutes of questions. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Luis Adolfo Luna Rodriguez. I'm from the Department of Electrical Engineering from Simvestaf, Guadalajara. Am I going to present our work titled Implementation of a Channel Pools with Modulation with Axi 4 Light Interface? The outline of this topic is as follows. Uh, in the introduction, the theory of the AMBA protocol, state of the art, and the objective of the work will be explained. And then, the implementation of the PWM controller and the generation of the AXI for light interface will be presented. And finally, I will present the results and conclusions of the work. The user reconfigurable devices took great importance lately for the design of digital circuits. Implementations such as peripherals, processors, IP cores, etc., involve having a standardized data transfer that complies with the characteristics of each one and can be interconnected with each other. One of the most important standards is the Advanced Microcontroller Bus Architecture, or MBA, MBA protocol. Developed by ARM in 1995, this is an open source standard that specifies the interconnection and control of functional blocks in a system of chip. Depending on the characteristics of the system, there are different protocols that are recommended to be used according to the performance on each element to be interconnected, with the advantage that they are compatible with each other in case you need to implement several protocols together. For example, Advanced Peripheral Boost APV uh, works for components with low bandwidth and complexity. Uh, advanced High Performance Boost HB works for high performance designs. Uh, the most used is the AXI protocol. This is for high speed systems and have different independent channels for read, for read and write transactions, which increase the interconnection characteristics. And there are few implementations in the state of the art where they master slave communication interface is generated from scratch or with closed software. For example, we have in, uh, microcontrollers with AXI and APV interface works together. Uh, system of chip for, for a specific application or designed with only external interface to connect another devices, etc. So the main objective of this work is the implementation of the IP course communication system with Axi4 light versions, generating a design flow from scratch uh, with a hardware description language. This implementation of this peripheral 
with a standard communication helps to create a methodology for the development of systems that can migrate to ASICs with the advantage of not using pr proprietary software, for example, Tiling or Altera. The limited information motivates motivators to generation of this methodology from HDL and can be replicated of any IP of a system. And for this work, the first example with AMBA interface is with an independent A-channel pulse with modulation. Uh, and this is the, the finish of the work. <coughs> Uh, I will now explain the architecture of the PWM block. Uh, this figure shows the proposed diagram with the architecture. This block manages eight channels independently with an adjustable frequency. This architecture consists in three main blocks. First color is to, to configure each, uh, eight different speeds for the adjustable frequency and this is controlled by the PCM signal. Uh, we have a counter. This is a 16-bit top-down counter. And the PWM logic generates an independent PWM signal on each channel from the counter signal from the previous block, counter block. The operating principle of the AXI protocol consists on the handshake of two main signals. The signals are valid and ready. Uh, each generated with transmitter and receiver. Uh, red and right uh, transfers are generated independently. So each has different channels and a pair of ready and valid signals to perform the transfer. For example, to to write, we have three, three channels, write out a channel, write out a channel, and write response channel. Each channel has two pair of valid and ready signals. For example, write out channels has AW valid and AW ready. Write out a channel has two signals, W valid and W ready, etc. Uh, for write operation, we need three channels, write out a channel, write out a channel, and write response channel. Uh, why address and write data send information from master to slave and why response channel uh, and the slave sends the right and knowledge to the master for read transaction the master specifies the address to be read to the slave and the the read data channel the slave sends the data to read to the master. This is how to actually for interface works. And this figure, the figure seven, uh, shows the integration of the axi for light interface with the PWM generator blocks. First, the input signals were analyzed to relate them to a register bank that is shown in the two oh. tables. Uh, the first th three registers are for PWO blocks configuration and while the other signals are for configuring the duty cycle of each PWM channel. Each register has uh, uh, an address and that is access by the AW added error signal, which is part of the right address channel. And it's going to be modified with the data coming from W data channel, activated by the handshake signals. Uh, since the PWM only has a physical outputs, the name will only send data from the master to the slave. Thus, the data from the registers will be taken to configure it and generate each PWM signal and only have write operations. For the result, the Sailing's Vivado Design Suite was used with the FPGI SIBO board from DigiLink. First, uh, the synthesis of results are shown. 
where a low system occupation is observed, including the exit communication interface. For the verification of the PWL block, was performed using Synopsis BCS. Uh, we created a benchmark which consists in two environments. The first environment is for sampling and measuring of outputs and registers of the design under test, which is our PWM block, using methods of UVM register abstraction layer. And the second environment is for writing and writing registers inside the DOT using run front door, front door access. And the, the figure, na, um, figure nine shows the architecture of the PWM verification environment, and the table tree shows the content of the REC model for this bench generation. For simulation, we use the ceilings verification tool. This consists with a master block from ceilings that sets the configuration or setup and data of the registers and is connected with the PWM slave block as shown in figure. Uh, this control is generated with a test bench where the configurations of the registers are sent in order to generate the PWM signals of each channel independently. In this figure shows the simulation results the first four signals are the signals for generate the handshake for write address and write data. And the last signals shows the configuration of each PWM channel and the output and, and the physical output on each PWM channel. It's observed that the register server fitted be doing a write transfer with four signals generating a valid output on each PWM channel, which is shown in the following signals. As a conclusion, when describing an independent A-channel PWM controller with AXE for the interface, it serves as a basis for implementation in, a, in other blocks in the future using only HDM. In this case, the, the Xilinx Vivado software is only for simulation or this, for the design. And for example, we are working actually on the generation of a communication interface for memory blocks, UAR, processor, and some application specific accelerators. And thus generating its own methodology that will be served for more complex future designs. And uh, that brings me to end my presentation. And thank you for your attention. Okay. Uh, thank you, you, um, Luis Adolfo. Uh, we have now five minutes of uh, questions. Please feel free, anybody here online or if you are in the auditorium, uh, to ask. Uh, may I? I'm Dr. Ram Krishna. Of course. Doctor, please go ahead. Yeah, sir, uh, you have used Xilinx for this uh, you know, resource utilization and for Synopsis uh, VCS for simulation. What is the reason, sir? Mine. You have used Xilinx for resource utilization. You have uh, shown in the slide and also this uh, Synopsis VCS, uh, VCS uh, simulation. Sorry, I didn't hear the full question. Can you repeat, please? Yeah. Xilinx resource utilization for your design. EWM controller. Sorry. 
Hello, sir. Uh, I didn't hear the question. I problem is with the connections. Oh, please, Dr. Ramakrish, uh, could you repeat again your question? Yes. Uh, you have shown a slide, Xilinx resource utilization of your design PWM controller. Hello. Yes, we can hear okay. you, but okay, okay. I think that uh, we need a little bit more explanation. Could you please send us your question about uh, from the uh, about uh, for the chat here? Could you write it? Yeah, I have problems with the connection and can I hear correctly? OK. Could you see the, um, the question, Luis Adolfo? Is silent resource utilization is given? Can you explain that slide, please? OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, OK. In this slide shows the, the synthesis results are actually for like PWM controller. Uh, this first column is the resource or units from the FPGA, lookup tables, with lot and buffers. The second column is the utilization of this resource. Uh, the third column is the available from the FPGA, and the last column is the percents uh, by the utilizations from the available units so in this case we uh we show the the utilization is is uh well in this case uh show where a low low system occupation in this case this is the for the low complex complexity for the axi axi for light and the pwm controller Thank you, you, thank you, Dr. Ramakrishnan, and thank you, uh, Luis Adolfo, for uh, sharing us your topic. And we are now available to continue with the next session. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, you. Have a good day. Okay. Right now, we are going to continue with the. Uh, Dr. Jorge Aguilar Torrentera, uh, who is going to share with us the topic of capacitively coupled bandpass filter using defective ground structure, featuring shield current control. Is offline? Okay, let me see. It's offline. Okay. Well, in in this case, uh, maybe we can we could uh, change the order. I know that uh, Fernando Duarte is here with us in the auditorium. So it could be great if uh, he could share your topic with us right now. Are you available, Fernando? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. Right. I need to be right. 
Can I mean a sweet one? Thank you, Fernando Duarte. Please just let me know when you are uh, ready to share your, your slides. And thank you to everybody for your attendance in, the, in this 19th International Conference on Electrical Engineering, Computing Science and Automatic Control. Uh, we right now are going to start with the second part of this session. Uh, that uh, are three more uh, presentations. So right now we have the topic that is titled a strategy for air pools selection in the design of customized aircraft models for flight simulation testing. And this topic is going to be presented by Fernando Duarte Lopez. Sorry, so as the other um presentations fernando you have 15 minutes and then we can continue with a, a session of questions and answers okay thank you thank you hello everyone uh, thanks for being here and joining us in the CCA conference uh, uh, i'm fernando duarte and i'm going to present you my uh, the, this research work which is named a uh, strategy for airport collection in the design of customized aircraft models for flight simulation testing. Um, so first of all, I'm going to introduce you to through the out outline we are going to see. First, I'm going to present you the motivation for this work, then the preparation for geometric comparison. Later on, we are going to see the geometric comparison results. Next, we are going to see the preparations for the aerodynamic analysis. Last but not least, we are going to see the aerodynamic, aerodynamic comparison results, and finally, we are achieving the uh, discussion for our research work. So let's start out with the motivation. Well, what I was uh, made in my in my thesis for my um, for my master's degree, I was required to uh, make use of a uh, powerful uh, simulator. Of aircrafts, and I use the state of the art flight simulator uh, X Plane 11 that uh, allows you to introduce any, uh, almost any kind of aircraft avail, uh, that you can imagine and that can be built in another program which, which is spotted with this uh, simulator, which is uh, called Playmaker. In, in this, uh, let me take out this. In, in this uh, uh, program, you can uh, uh, build any kind of aircraft, as I have already said, uh, and you start by building its fuselage and then its lifting elements, such as the wings, that are very important. Uh, for building the wings, we have to uh, uh, provide the air pools for, that generates them. Uh, for that, we can use another program that is funded also with the X-Plane uh, flight simulator, which is called Air Pool Maker. This airfoil maker program allows you to build a, to design airfoils based on an inverse methodology. That means that we use uh, the aerodynamic, aerodynamic characteristics of the airfoil to form it. The, the problem with this is that if we want to uh, achieve a full design of an airfoil for the full range of angles of attack, uh, we we have to uh, this uh, that it is, we have to go to the information for every angle of attack that is. A very difficult task or time consuming, I would say. This is, for example, the files uh, that are generated when you, uh, you develop a, a airfoil design in, uh, in Airfoil Maker. You have uh, not just uh, uh, 360 degrees, but you also have more because in, from the range from minus 20 degrees to 20 degrees, we have steps of 0.1. Uh, 
and not only that, but we have to do this for uh, up to four instances of Reynolds number. So it, it, it comes a lot of time consuming. So we come to the uh, a decision of making a, another solution. And uh, this was uh, the reason why we uh, proposed this paper. Uh, it was to make a comparison uh, geometrically between the airports we are pretended to use, or, I mean the real ones, in our airport with the airports that provided the program by itself, the default airports. Yes, the, the, the program provides a, a, a list of airports. So uh, for this, we have uh, then to prepare uh, our geometric comparison. Uh, so um, uh, we, I, I have said, uh, we got a list of 28 default airports uh, available in the, X, in the uh, Playmaker uh, uh, program, both with explain, uh, for which, uh, to which we can use them in order to uh, generate uh, wings of an aircraft. Um, uh, what, uh, so we are going to uh, make a comparison between uh, the airports of those lists with our original airports that we are pretending to be that we are pretend that we pretend to use in our design of the uh, of the wings. Uh, for this, we are making uh, use of the metric, uh, mathematical metric, uh, mean square error, to uh, to uh, metric to make uh, the measurement between the our original airports, which I'm going to call from now on custom airports, custom airports, and the ones from the list. Uh, in order to save uh, time, we reduced our list uh, by eliminating those uh, those files which has a tag which does not correspond to our pretensions. I mean, for example, the supersonic, the, the Air Force which has, which has a supersonic tag in it, we, we discard them because our flight is not uh, supposed to be in supersonic uh, regime. Okay, uh, another thing we would want to know is a form of an Air Force uh, uh, file in, uh, I mean, for a coordinates Air Force file because we are going to use the Air Force coordinates file uh, not uh, uh, and, and these files are are formed by a chord, which is the uh, by two columns. The first column on the left is for, is the chord, and the and the second column on the right is formed by the upper and lower surfaces. Here we have an example of a coordinate air profile. Uh, for geometric comparison, we are going to make a, uh, a use of the geom uh, geometrical uh, files which define the airports. Uh, uh, instead of the uh, aerodynamic characteristics ones, which uh, we would discard. Uh, so we got a chord vector at the at the left, as I've already said, and we can uh, part it in two, uh, 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 trim it in two, in, and in the chord vector that forms the upper surface curve and the chord vector that forms the lower surface curve. The curve. In this way, we got the coordinates of our air profile. Um, so what are we going to do? We are going to apply this uh, metric uh, to compare two pair of airfoils. First of all, in the upper surface of these two airfoils, we compare them, and then we add the uh, the metric of the lower surfaces of, of a pair of airfoils divided by two, and we got the metric of the airfoils in general for the two pair of airfoils. Uh, here we have an example of, of the upper surface of two different airfoils. And we can see here that both have a dimension different. The first one have a dimension of nine, and the second one have a dimension of seven. And also, the co their coincident with respect to their x-axis is, is 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 different. They do not coincident. They do not uh, coincide, and they must. So we can apply this method uh, for for uh, so making a solution for this. We make a linear interpolation of the airport with the biggest dimension on the airport with the lowest dimension, as it is shown in the picture. So now, we, now on we can uh, proceed to use this mathematical metric uh, to compare them. Um, we develop an algorithm to make this procedure in uh, that it is shown in the paper, and for uh, for that algorithm to work requires this. Uh, that uh, we give them uh, uh, that is uh, you can that you can program it in any from, uh, language uh, program language and you have to give them a comma separated file with the same with this structure uh, where the 
chord and the upper, and the vector of the upper surface is in the left, and the chord which forms the lower surface and the lower surface is in the right. They don't matter if they have different dimensions. So what do we got? We got the, same, the next uh, compar geometric comparison results in which uh, for our custom air holes, uh, for the, well, a, a wing, I have to mention uh, quickly that is formed in, in, in Playmaker by two air holes, the root air holes and the tip air holes. The root air holes are the air holes which are at the base of the wing and the tip air holes are the, the air holes which are, are the last part of the wing. So for a root custom air hole, we got that the Clark Y uh, air hole is the closest to it, and uh, geometrically speaking, and the, uh, for the tip custom air hole, we got this, also, this NASA LS air hole, which is the most closely to it geometrical. Uh, we can see this from another angle in this table, uh, where we can see the numerical uh, results of the MSE uh, applied to, to uh, with the, the, the procedure previously explained. And we got the red ones, which has the lower MSE. So these are the chosen ones, the winners. So now we have to make the prepar uh, preparation for the aerodynamic analysis. Uh, for this, uh, uh, this is to show that the, um, uh, using uh, geometrical similar airfoils in the design of a wing, uh, uh, is, it does not affect the performance of the wing formed by the real or the custom airfoils. Uh, so uh, first we have to uh, calculate a Reynolds number in order to make a 2D CPD analysis of the four airfoils, I mean the two custom ones and the two real ones. For this, we have to choose a cruise speed of our aircraft. We chose uh, 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 to which our aircraft is intended to fly. It is intended to fly at two, tw uh, 22 meters per second. And then we, kept, uh, we took for the length reference the airfoil chord of the medium part between the tip and root airfoil. And then with taking the cinematic viscosity, we obtained this Reynolds number. I have to mention that this name Reynolds number is in the middle part of a whole range of Reynolds number we have to use to make the analysis. First, we have to do the 2D CPD analysis of the air force. Now we, we have done that, we proceed to make a 3D CPD analysis of a wing generated by the custom air force and a wing generated by these winner's air force. The same shaped wing. Uh, we, we run the, the analysis and we get the following results. Uh, we are going to uh, get uh, uh, aerodynamical graphs of, uh, of, the, of the principal aerodynamic uh, coefficients, which are uh, the coefficients of lift, of drag, and moment. Uh, 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 we are going to get um, this graph versus the angle of attack of the, of the two results of the two wings, which we can see here the percentage error. Uh, for the first, the lift coefficient versus angle of attack is 4.4, wind drag coefficient versus angle of attack 8.4, wind moment coefficient versus angle of attack is 6.5. Those percent, percentage we can see it more clearly here in a graph uh, where they, they correspond to the to the table I, ha I have shown you. Uh, it is there, and uh, we can see the error that is uh, small in, in all cases. And in the second one uh, of the drag coefficient, we see that the error is highest uh, at, the, at the part that starts from five uh, degrees of attack. Uh, uh, but it is compensated with the other graphs that uh, reduce the error tends to zero in that same region, in that same region. So with this, we can get to a discussion where we can uh, clearly, uh, we can uh, clearly see that the aerodynamic performance of two same shaped wings with similar aerodynamic twists, given a geometric, a geometric similarity between their root and deep air holes, turned out quite similar. Therefore, when building aircraft wings in Playmaker, selection of the air holes bonded with the X Plane A11 flight simulator in replacement of the designer defined air holes. Is suitable for is suitable after implementing the geometric comparison technique. So we can just make this comparison and choose the airfoils from the default list. Finally, uh, we see that under this change, as I already said, the aerodynamic performance of the aircraft wings with 
the, of the aircraft winds within the flight simulator would not be far from the aerodynamic performance of the real ones. Thank you. Uh, next on, I'm, I have a video that if uh, the, the, if you allow me, I can show you it lasts just for 30 seconds. And then we, uh, if I have time, if not, we can proceed with the questions. Can I try to show? Yes, this? you have time, please. Uh, you can show us. OK, thank you. This video was made when I was making uh, this uh, work. So it is in Spanish. I'm going to mute it. And I'm going to explain that part of 30 seconds. I, I made a simulation of call of uh, autonomous simulation for the, of those called model on the loop. Uh, 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 using X Plane 11 and the I don't play it. Sorry, and I made this simulation uh, it, and the aircraft uh, which I fly was the aircraft that that I shown in the first slide of my presentation. Uh, as you can see, the performance of the aircraft was uh, correct, and uh, it was uh, the selection of the airport was uh, was made using this procedure so we have in fact a great result so that's all this is my aircraft with which is being made in an autonomous flight in explain 11. that's all perfect thank, thank, you, thank you so Thank you so much, Fernando, for sharing us, uh, your video too. And right now we are going to start with the uh, questions. Uh, if anybody here online or if you are uh, assistentially uh, participating here in the auditorium, please feel free to start with these questions. Anybody? Um, yes. You show, you show us um, the three graphs that you obtain, the leaf uh, versus angle of attack, growth versus angle of attack, and uh, its moment versus angle of attack. Yeah. So yeah. My, my, my question is, why um, do you think that the growth coefficient uh, has the, the large uh, error in these three, three graphs? Well, uh, we cannot say it clearly because uh, the the performance was made by geometrical similarity. It would it would have some uh, amount of error, but we cannot define it where or when because we don't uh, the 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 behavior of the graphs is is not um, directly proportional to the uh, geometric of the of the air force. Uh, there is well, it could be, but not in a linear way. We cannot predict it just as is. So that's why we have to make this um, CPD analysis in order to obtain those graphs and then uh, just show that the error is minimum to the error that would be if we used the original or custom air force we pretended to use in the design of the wings of the aircraft. Okay. Thank you. And I'd like to uh, make another question. Yeah. Um, and we, we, we can use your algorithm to compare uh, air holes that are out there of the explain. I mean, we can compare two air holes that are not 
this frame but compared half of the software? Yes. One of the uh, of the uh, advantages that has this algorithm is what, that we can use it to, I mean, a sort of uh, a inverse engineering uh, for which we want to determine which airfoil of certain aircraft is defined to. Okay. Uh, uh, so we can uh, make a scan or something uh, similar to get the partition of that uh, wing and got the airfoil and then compare it to uh, some uh, list of airfoils and see which is the most closest to it, more, 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 which is the most closest to it and then determine that it would probably be, uh, be one of them, the closest, that it is the airfoil which that uh, airfoil is designed. Okay. I think that is a powerful and useful tool. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, maybe we could uh, take advantage here because uh, we are just waiting uh, for the attendance of uh, Jorge Aguilar Torrentera and Gandhi Alexis. And we could have, uh, if anybody has another uh, question, uh, we could uh, take advantage of this, right? Okay, I think that, uh, well, uh, for now there is um, everything. Fernando Duarte Lopez, thank you so much for your, uh, for sharing us your topic. And, uh, well, uh, we are going to continue here. Uh, Jorge, uh, do you know if Luis Alberto, Jorge, no, I'm sorry, if Jorge Aguilar and Gandhi Alexis are, are going to attend here the the conference? Yeah, Alexis is here, Dr. Caspar. Ah, perfect. Uh, give us a, a minute to prepare the material. Yeah, oh, thank you. Okay, Aguilar uh, is offline. Yes, yes. Well, uh, let's wait. Hopefully, Jorge could. Uh, attend uh, the conference uh, next to this presentation, right? Okay. Thank you so much. Well, once again, thank you to everybody for your attendance here in the 19 International Conference on Electrical Engineering, Computing Science and Automatic Control. Uh, right now, we are going to uh, have the opportunity to uh, know about the topic that Gandhi Alexis is going to share with us. That is a uh, titled Adaptive Backstepping control for the long, uh, longitudinal flight on a blended wing body aircraft. And as the other sessions, Gandhi, uh, you're going to have 15 minutes to share your presentation with us and then we can uh, continue with uh, with some questions from the audience. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. He's ready, Doctor. Thank you. Gandhi, we can start with the yes, with your presentation. We have 15 minutes. Just give me a minute, please. We are preparing the presentation. Okay.
Okay, I think uh, we are ready. May I start? For sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. I hope that you are having an, an amazing day. I'm going to present you the topic of today. Adaptive backstepping control for the longitudinal flight of a blending Wimberley aircraft. In this presentation, we have six items. So I'm going to start with the first one. That is the motivation of this research. Well, in the 1988, the NASA asked the following question to McDonnell Douglas, now going about that it exists a new aerodynamic aircraft that have the capacity of long range and huge uh, payload capacity. So many uh, aeronautical engineers and aerodynamicists <laughs> launched this, this version that called blending wind valley aircraft. So it was the first concept of this generation of configuration in aircraft, and it was compared with Cuban Queen, that is the conventional aircraft in which we travel nowadays. So the general improvements that we obtained with this new configuration was actually less total weight, higher lift to draw radio, and safe fuel in 25%. That is an amazing percentage in safety. So according with these results, uh, Robert Liebig, who was one of the uh, pioneers in this geometry investigation, said that actually the geometry of this configuration is the new technology that brings all these advantages. And in these graphs, we can see uh, the air transport incomes that we have since 1980 to 2020. And we can see the constant increase we have in the demand of uh, commercial flights but also in according to this in the incomes, but also in the emissions of CO2, uh, of CO2 and any other pollution gases. So if we want to, to reach like Europe uh, established in the roadmap that you can see in this red line, this is the objective that Europe uh, established to by 2050, and the objective is reduced in 50% the emissions we have now. If we don't take action and we continue with the same technology, uh, well, the emissions continue to increase in this order. The green area are the scenarios that we can have if we implement little changes in this technology, in the tube and wind configuration. But the most interesting part is that if we use this blue area in which uh, we can implement it and obtain these improvements with biofuels and new aircraft technology and geometry, like is the case of blending wind barrier aircraft. So blending wind barrier aircraft is a hybrid between a flying wind like the V2 from Norman Grumman and a tubing wind configuration uh, that we know really well. So the, the capacity that has like a flying wind is that we have the airfoil in all the cross section in the whole body. But also we have the payload capacity that a fuel and wind has. So we have this amazing aerodynamic performance with the payload capacity we have here. And so these, with those, uh, all these uh, studies and researches, many uh, countries and uh, many countries in Europe also were collaborating for investigate new, new configurations on these kinds of aircraft. So I have this timeline about how all these investigations have been done. And finally, we have these three proposals that are the last days proposals that we have. This is for Maverick, this is for Point, and this is for Bombardier. So uh, we are hoping to, to see this, this aircraft in the next decades, in 2030 or 2050. And well, assuming all that, we propose our own uh, blending wind barrier aircraft that we call EHECA. And it was created and designed in collaboration between the UPMH, that is the university where I came from, Universidad Politécnica Metropolitana de Hidalgo, and here in the Sasa Academy. So here you can see our render design in Katia and the uh, main features we have in, in our design. This kind of configuration use a uh, reflex artful to maintain the uh, longitudinal stability. And we have this, this in the central part and this in the other side. We have here general uh, measurements of our aircraft, of our scale model. And we have here the aerodynamic control surfaces that we implement in our aircraft. You can see uh, four elevators that are in this part, two in this side, 
and other two in this side. Mm -hmm. And we have two ailerons, also two in this side and two in this side. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, rudders in our vertical tail axis, one per any one of them. So with elevators, we control the pitch moment. That is this moment of the aircraft in the longitudinal uh, movement. Uh, other one, we generate roll moment. Uh, with rudders, we get generate your, your moment. So this is the way in which we control the, uh, the motion in the aircraft. And to be able to know how it works and to implement the future control, we uh, develop the dynamical model of our aircraft with these assumptions that you are seeing here, basing in the new second law and taking these points into account. And we established three reference frames. The first of them is the air reference frame. The second is the horizontal looking frame that is parallel to this reference frame. And finally, the aircraft bearing frame that uh, is the aircraft of the, of the, of the uh, Sorry, the, the frame of the aircraft, in, and it helps us to, meet, to, to measure the changes that we have in the rotational motion. For example, here I have the yaw angle that I generate from the initial condition parallel to the earth. So I generate the yaw uh, uh, angle. After, I generate a pitch moment and after a roll moment. So this is the way in which we can measure this. Yeah, thank you. And we we can calculate uh, the position of, of these angles integrating this equation of here that are the Euler angles. And we have the transformation matrix from the uh, velocities of the aircraft bar. And in the dynamic part, we have the causes of the movement that are the forces that we have here. In the translational motions, we can identify uh, the structure of the, of the Newton law in every axis. But what we have here the sum, the sum forces. We have the aerodynamic forces, the propulsion forces, and the gravity forces. The aerodynamic forces are divided in stability and control. In control, uh, we have the forces of the aerodynamic control surfaces, which are the effectors we use to control the aircraft. And these uh, parameters are estimated or calculated uh, with experimental or with simulations. Then we have the equations of the rotational motion, also dynamic equations. And here we only have the sum of the forces uh, of the aerodynamic forces in stability and control. Gravity and propulsion we only consider in the translational motion. <laughs> it fails again. Thank you. And we simplify this model of six degrees of freedoms to obtain the uh, three degrees of freedom of the longitude of, of the longitudinal flight. So we have uh, the degree of freedom in the longitudinal axis, in the normal axis, which uh, allows us uh, to get at a higher altitude or, or the same in this altitude. And we have the pitch moment that generates this, uh, this angular motion. And we estimate this uh, approximating to zero, the velocity p and the angular velocity r. Then we make this uh, dynamic model in a space, a space representation. So we have here this representation of the, our null linear model. The function f represents the dynamic of the system, and the function g represents the uh, dynamic of our aerodynamic control surfaces. And here we, we are considering the actuator dynamics that we have with this equation, where the things are constant, and we have the elevator control signals and the control command generated by our controller that we design in the next uh, slides. So here we have the preposition, and the preposition for our adaptive controller is that we don't have knowledge or uh, f, the function f, that is the dynamic of the, of the system, is unknown. And this is very useful because in practice, uh, the aerodynamic coefficients changes all the time. And when we cal calculate this, we calculate for a certain uh, condition, for a certain condition of flight. So for that, we propose an adaptive law that is here, and also we propose a, a reference command 
considering these signals to control it. And finally, we propose the control command for the actuator, for the dynamic actuators. So with these uh, prepositions, and let actually the Latinum function be like, you can see it here, we differentiate this equation and uh, substituting the adaptive law and the control law that I just uh, showed you, we obtain this equation of here. So uh, here we can demonstrate that our closed loop is guaranteed. And so from the Lasalle Yoshikawa Chorin, uh, that the state C, who is of the dynamic of the system, and here we have the uh, actuator dynamics converged asymptotically to the origin as P10 to the uh, infinity. So we can say that our uh, our states tends to our desired states and the control loop to the uh, controller design. And as part of the aerodynamic design, we establish these uh, geometry design parameters, and we establish these uh, properties according to the uh, to the flight and this case in the simulation flights that we want to obtain these these, these parameters. So using the software XFLR5, we obtain the no-dimensional aerodynamic coefficients. And with this, we can calculate the dimensional aerodynamic coefficients that we have here. Here are the stability coefficients of the system. And here we have the control coefficients of the aerodynamic control surfaces. And in longitudinal flight, that is the most time we spend when we are in flight. For example, we also have this flight cruise. That is the, the flight we we and we, we are when we follow a continuous altitude. Well, it's important to demonstrate this longitudinal static, static stability. And with these two graphs, according with the pitch moment coefficient, that is the coefficient of this motion, and the lift coefficient, we can guarantee the flight capability of our aircraft. So if we have a pitch moment coefficient of zero and we have different zero lift, uh, we can guarantee that with the velocity we do the simulations, we can fly. And we have uh, the trim flight. A angle of attack in this condition that is here and is a 3.4 angle of attack. And we have finally the proof to a guarantee longitudinal static stability that is if we have this negative slope in our graphs that well we we reach this this consideration and also these parameters that are negative. So finally we have here uh, okay now here we can do the video. This is a model in the loop simulation that also we use, we do using X-Plane. And we, do, and we uh, make this mission where the aircraft is climbed to 24 meters altitude. As you can see in the video, that is this part of here. Then uh, we are going to reach uh, the altitude of 50 meters to continue uh, there for a while, then descend and finally descend to a final uh, altitude. As you can see in the video, our model is flying uh, in a really good performance. Also, you can see that we are using uh, the two elevators that we propose in our control uh, in our control effectors, and this is the easiest case that we can have in this configuration. You can notice here the both of elevators. This is the easy the easy case because we are managed only the elevators to the pitch moment, but the complex and um, why the then the Weber reactor are so attractive is because we can use these uh, control effectors like elevators. So if I use it uh, with synchronicity, I generate a pitch moment. But if I make inverse conditions, I generate roll moment. So this is the, the attractive and the complex that we can obtain uh, according to, to have uh, many effectors in the trailing edge. And we also made the simulations in the Python environment with these adaptive and control games. And well, the simulation that you see is uh, similar to these to these results. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, the adaptive controller, back, back, the adaptive backstage controller, allows robustness to complete missions with the same control and adapting games. This is because we uh, experiment, we uh, test different uh, missions, and we it was not necessary to change the adaptive and control games. We can have good performance with the same change and well. And the other part is that we are assuming no parameters in the aerodynamic data. Like I, I, like I said, uh, assuming that these parameters change all the time, this is a really useful tool. And finally, we have this like future work. We hope to work with control allocation machines to work with these elements uh, control surfaces 
and uh, with the complete dynamics. Because our final product, este purpose is build our state model and do uh, simulations with power in the loop control. So we expect um, a zero emission autonomous logistical system for different load range and payload rates, plus other command applications like vision, uh, artificial vision. Here I have some of our uh, references. And that is all. So now it's time to questions if you have fun or any comments. Thank you. I have one question. Yeah. Um, I think that if this concept uh, has success because of the necessity of the world uh, to reduce these emissions, uh, it, uh, later on, uh, probably it would be uh, uh, um, aircraft such as this be produced. Uh, so um, uh, is the control you, de you have developed uh, uh, suitable for a similar construction, similar buildings? or it is exclusive to your aircraft? Okay, this is a good question. Uh, it, it would be uh, exclusive of our aircraft because uh, as I said, uh, a very important part of this aircraft is that it has many effectors in the trailing edge that we can use like elevators. So I propose this configuration. So in, in the beginning, like I propose this configuration, the control is designed for my configuration. Okay. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, but imagine that they are similar buildings. Okay. Would uh, be suitable to use your control as a base for the other uh, developments or uh, similar uh, configurations? I think we can implement them in different configurations, but we need to take into account the differences between the models. Yeah, maybe if we have uh, another number of uh, control surfaces, we need to adapt it. It's not too much work, but yeah. We, we need to consider this part. Any other question? Online? No? Any, any other question? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Gandhi, Alexis, for sharing your, your topic with us. Thank you. And, well, uh, we, we have another uh, presentation that is Jorge Aguilar, uh, but I wonder if he's already uh, online. I don't see him here, or if he's attending in the auditorium. Do you know Jorge Marmolejo? Uh, no, doctor. Is, uh, he can, he have a trouble, a technical trouble and can show his job. Okay, that's a shame. But well, uh, with this, um, I have only to say that uh, thank you so much for all the participants, for the attendance and for sharing your topics and your words with us and uh, to all the auditorium and the attendance online here and also in the auditorium uh, for this 19 international conference on electric and engineering computing science and automatic control uh, please feel free to attend any other um, topic or presentation uh, you can uh, see them uh, online, uh, or uh, if you are at Simbestap Sakatenko too, you can probably go to the other rooms and to know uh, more about other interesting topics, right? And with this, uh, if you are okay, uh, Jorge Marmolejo, uh, we could uh, finish this session at this room. Thank you, Doctor. No, thank you to everybody.